Welcome again. Right now we're at John chapter 14, verses 16 through 21. Jesus talks about the spirit of truth and obedience. Jesus said, I will pray to the Father, and he will give you another counselor. Now, it's not very often Jesus actually talked about praying for somebody, okay? And I know that a lot of people today, you know, especially in the charismatic world, they would pray for someone to be healed or pray that somebody be raised from the dead even. Jesus didn't do that very much, if at all, okay? A lot of times when people got healed or when people received a miracle from the Lord, uh, they received it by faith, okay? Uh, Jesus didn't lay their hand, Jesus didn't lay his hands on them and say, oh, Father, I pray. No, no, no. Not very often did Jesus ever talk about praying for somebody like this, but Jesus says here to his disciples, I will pray to the Father and he will give you another counselor. Let's look at this again. There's a little asterisk by a counselor here, and you will see here, counselor, helper, intercessor, advocate, and comforter. So the word in Greek is actually the same word that we get our word parallel from. You know, it means to go alongside somebody, okay? So when Jesus said here that he will send another counselor, he was talking about sending somebody, that somebody will come from the Father, that will be alongside you. All of the disciples. In context here, you got to realize, he was talking to his disciples. He didn't say, because I know that you know some people believe that this was talking about another prophet to come hundreds of years from then. No, 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 no. Jesus said to his disciples. He didn't say, well, you know what? In so many hundred years, then my father will send you another comforter or counselor or whatever. Okay? No, he said right then. He said, I will pray to the father and he will give you another counselor that he may be with you forever. Okay? This is not talking about any kind of common human being. This is talking about someone who's with you forever. Not someone who comes and leaves. Not someone who comes and dies. Okay? It's talking about somebody who's with you forever. The spirit of truth. Again, this is not talking about a human here now. This is talking about a spirit. The spirit of truth. Whom the world can't receive. For it doesn't see him and doesn't know him. You know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. Okay, this is a prophecy of Acts chapter 2, when the Spirit of God will come in them. Okay? I will not leave you orphans, I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world will see me no more. But you will see me, because I live, you will live also. In that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. So Jesus here is saying that he's going to a place, okay? He said this over and over again, that he's going to go away, that he's going to leave his disciples behind. But here he's continuing to comfort his disciples by saying, no, listen, I'm not going to leave you as orphans. I'm sending you another, okay, another person, a counselor, a comforter. The one that I'm sending you is the spirit of truth, not a human being, a spirit of truth that's with you now and will be in you. Let's take this a step deeper. Jesus said, I'm not going to leave you as orphans, okay? I will come to you. So what Jesus was saying here is that he will be with them by the spirit of truth, by the spirit of of God by the Holy Spirit. Note here that Jesus did nothing on earth aside from the Holy Spirit. He didn't he did not rely on his own you know human form, his own human power to do what he did. He relied completely upon the Spirit of God. He did what he did. All of the miracles, all of the great wonders that he did was by the Spirit of God, okay? That's why he said in John chapter 14, verse 12, the works that I do, you will do also. 
and even greater than these because I'm going to send you the same spirit, the same person that gives me the power to do what I did will get, will give you the power to do what I did. Jesus said here, one who has my commandments and keeps them, that person is the one who loves me. One who loves me will be loved by my father and I will love him and will reveal myself to him. Now I spoke a lot about this in the previous uh, teaching, so I'm not going to get into too much depth here. Jesus made it clear here. There are commands to obey. Now, what commands? I spoke about that in the last teaching, okay? I'm not going to go through all that again. There are commands that we need to obey. And if we obey those commands, then we will be in his love. Then the Father will love us, and Jesus will love us, and we will remain in that love, okay? Jesus made it very clear here. If you truly love Jesus, you won't be just going around going, I love Jesus, or singing songs about loving Jesus. No, you'll be saying, Lord, am I okay with you? I mean, I love you so much. I want to make sure that I'm in line with you. I'm obeying you. I follow your instructions properly. If I love you, I will follow your instructions. And that's what Jesus said here. So love, true love, is obedience. And Jesus spoke a lot about the importance, the great importance of obedience. As you go your way, may God bless you as you think about these things and show you great and mighty things, enlighten the eyes of your understanding to give you revelation. In other words, that you would see and understand things that your peers do not. Thanks again.